You know what I mean? Yeah. So he, he's sort of able to deflect it by giving the impression that he's a little bit weirder than he actually is. Also, Guardians being conventional, at this sort of point, going like that was a little bit conventional. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's kind of my point, is that, and we've talked about this before, is that pe- people of any type can take any action, but the reasons for doing them are different, and the method is different. And so you have, that's why, in essence, it's a little bit more interesting than having an NF character who gets into these things because it's a little bit more expected. Yep. You know, from their personality, it just sort of fits. Whereas you see Bayless doing it, and it seems like someone who's in crisis and, and having a problem with uh, his own identity or his own place in the world, like yeah. he sort of says in this episode, uh, that he kind of has a hard time saying, who am I? Um, and that's the thing where, again, because idealists have that kind of feeling from a very young age, they've been dealing with that much longer. Whereas sensing types, it's not usually something that we tend to think about most of our lives. And then you get somewhere in that thirties range, you know, the exact age is different for by the person, but somewhere you start to sort of develop those parts of yourself where, uh, you question your own motivations more start to actually think about, you know, why am I doing things and where do I fit in, in the world? And so that's kind of what's happened to Bayless. Do you remember that bit? I don't know who that little NF guy was who went around with the camera. I'm talking about uh, Brody? Yes, Brody. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, well, there's a good example. If Brody had said, you know, I'm studying Buddhism or I may, you know, I'm thinking I'm bisexual or no, it, you know, there would have been a few jokes about it probably, but then that would have been it because nobody would have thought it that strange. Oh, because they already thought of him as being sort of this weird guy. So, <laughs> do you remember when they had that storyline about him moving in with all the different people and they weren't happy? And I think Bayliss complained about he didn't want to have conversations about Nietzsche yeah. uh, on the breakfast table. Mm-hmm. So, and also, and also getting into the Buddhism for the reason that he wanted calmness, that he wanted to be at peace with himself. Yeah, and I have this thing about I have this theory about SJ is that, especially at the ICJ and ISFJ, that they organise and a bit OCD about their environment because inside they're a bit they want to feel stable, and a, a disorganised environment can, can sort of like get on their nerves and they need to like calm themselves on the inside. Whereas the SPs are a little bit, they get bored. <laughs> a little bit, you know, they want some external stimulation to like change their inner state. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's because with SPs, it's like our entire lives are phases. Yeah. So it's like we can drop something that we've been really into for months or years and then suddenly switch to something else. And. Guardians especially don't really get that. They're like, what's this, what's going on with this person? Because if they haven't really gotten to know this person yeah. well, then they don't really know that about, yeah. you know. Um, whereas fellow SPs, really, it's not anything unusual. Like when somebody changes what they're into, yeah. like they're, it's just sort of like because we understand or we do the same thing ourselves. So, um, um, Brief, but there's a... There's a... There's a theory in socionics that the SPs are like static types, so it's like they're into one thing at a time, and then it's like they've suddenly changed to something else, and it's like so the static thing is like suddenly one thing, then quickly switch to something else. It's not yeah, like I a mean, gradual change. It's not that there can't be more than one interest, but there's usually one primary interest. There's usually yeah. one thing above everything else, and the other things are sort of side interests, but they always take a backseat to sort of the thing that we're number one at the moment. Yes. Yeah, um, and what I've actually found, and it's probably, you know, it's different depending on the person and probably different ages. But what I found, at least since I've actually been paying attention to this in my adult life, that it's usually about three years <laughs> where I'm, in, I'm into one thing for, your, for around three years. And that's usually when uh, it starts to change. Something if, you, else. if you think of the SP actors, they only wanted to do three years on Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, yeah, I don't know why that that particular period. I'm sure with probably with some, it's less than that, and some, it's more. But um, 
you know, and, and you could probably, you know, maybe if you did some research into like the athletes that, you know, that change teams, you know, how often they, oh. <laughs> you know, or coaches that do that, you know, I you might see an, a similar thing. I can give you an example of that. I think someone, Davy Thompson was a decathlete uh, in the Olympics for Britain. And I think maybe one coach said to him, only have a coach for a couple of years because within that time they're going to teach them everything you know and you might as well move on to another coach who is going to teach you different things. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like that as a fan, but I understand yeah. it as, you know, uh, because I've, I've always actually – it's weird because I have certain things in sports. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but the sport sort of lends itself towards certain – traditions being revered even in even though it's very dominated by artisans it's they're still a very heavy maybe it's because so many fans are, are yeah. guardians that yeah there's just sort of this always a more of a tradition placed on it than say like music or something where it's like usually about like what's the new sound <laughs> whereas in sports there's a lot more uh, tradition and so i actually find myself respecting the teams more that stay with the same coach for a longer period of time and are always switching every couple of years. So usually the SJs might be annoyed by spitting, but when it's in baseball, it goes, ah, that's tradition. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a lot of things like that where it's, uh, you know, we've talked about before, you know, people that there's sort of a stereotype, at least in the U.S., uh, Guardians being like conservative politically. But as we've said, uh, there's plenty of liberal SJs because they come from places where yep. liberalism is the tradition. Yep. Yeah, and now you get like the eco-friendly recycler SJs because that's the conventional thought process. Yeah, but there, and you know, in the U.S., especially in like uh, the Northeast and 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 some in the South, you have uh, some of this old guard of uh, Democrats that are kind of uh, working class, yeah. sometimes uh, Catholic, or um, you know, or even if they're Protestant, they're from like more traditional mainline Protestant, not like the uh, evangelical. Yeah. Um, and so they're they're conservative, kind of more lifestyle wise and kind of more traditional family. But their politics are old school Democrat. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like and there was a tradition of that in the past, like the Christian socialism thing. We won't get into that. Um, you know, when you said about the. Um, uh, the ballad storyline i'll just put here the luther mahoney storyline it ain't <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I will i did like though i, I want to say um you know the case that the guardian ballard had in this episode not just 